Welcome to my latest lure fishing project. For this video, I swore to myself last week that I'd be outside on a riverbank introducing this video using the lures that I'd made. The weather has been so awful since Christmas I haven't had a chance, so I'm stuck behind a desk. For this video, I'm back with soft plastic worms, and rather than producing them in an open mold, I've made my own version of a little injection mold with some silicon and bits and pieces. The advantage of this really is I can produce much smaller and completely round worms down to quite tiny sizes really. Enjoy the film. As with previous projects, to make the master I'm using polymer clay and I've softened this up by warming it and kneading it. Once I'm happy that's, that's pliable and soft, I'm going to take a small piece off and then roll it into a just a rough worm shape. To add some reinforcement, I'm using a, a bicycle spoke, and this I salvaged from a really badly buckled wheel. I'm just going to push that in, kind of halfway, and then close up behind it. Then roll again. The polymer clay doesn't really grip onto the spoke, so I'm just going to kind of stretch it along as I do it, very gently, and that should keep it in contact with the metal. But once I've got it about the right thickness, I can use a knife and just trim it to, to the length that I want. To add the ribs to the worm, I'm going to use a texturing tool. This has been made from a piece of hardboard that I've stuck some fine line writing paper onto. And then with a the Stanley knife, just cut notches along the edge of the lines on both sides. And finally, using the notches, I've wrapped the board with some 30 pound monofilament fishing line. To use the texturing tool, I'm going to get a bit of polymer clay, just stick it down. And then I can take my worm and just roll it just a bit under halfway along to pick up the texture. And then I'm going to turn it round. And do the same on the other side. And I've left this gap here just to make it a bit more worm like. With that main texturing done, I can just neaten off the ends, kind of make them taper. And then I can find a ceramic tile for the oven. I'm going to lay my worm on. I've also made another worm that approximately the same dimensions. I'm going to bake these two together. Once the masters have cooled, I can get on with making the mould. And I'm starting out with a chamber that's going to hold a hot PVC. This is a piece of 22mm copper that I've cut down from some salvaged plumbing pipe. To form a socket in the mould to receive the chamber, I've taken a piece of polymer clay and rolled it out to about 9mm. I'm going to press my copper in and just rotate it a little. Then pull it out. That's left me with a little disc. Then I can get back to my, my worms. So if I put the tile to one side for a minute and just grab a pair of ordinary pliers and firmly grab the spoke just after the worm. I'm going to grip that as tightly as I can and then I'm going to put a 90 degree bend on that end and then trim that off. Quite short. Oof. For the other end, I'm going to take another little piece of polymer clay and just make a kind of cone. This is going to be the outflow of the pipe. And then I'm going to trim that as well. 
and I can repeat the same process for the other worm. So I'm back with my disc and my worms and I'm going to place my first worm into the disc. And I've got a little bit of a spacer here I'm going to lay underneath the worm and, and then I can do the same with the other. There we go. Just to finish off the back of that disc, I've got a bit more polymer clay. I'm just going to kind of cover that, cover that bit of wire. And then it's back in the oven for another 15 minutes. The polymer clay is cooled and hardened up and I've taken it off the tile. And I'm going to prepare to coat it with some RTV silicon. And to do that, I'm using a, a disco ball motor. This is a rig I normally use for coating my wooden layers with epoxy. But in this case, I'm going to attach my little disc to the wood with a drop of super glue. This piece of wood's got a hole in it that's going to fit onto the motor nice and neatly hopefully if I plug that in it'll start to rotate I'm going to leave that for a couple of minutes and mix up a small amount of silicon for the mold I'm using a two-part RTV silicon I'm mixing up the minimum amount that the scales will measure this is the catalyst. There's quite a long work time with this silicon, something like 40 minutes. So I'm mixing it quite slowly because I don't want to include too many bubbles in the mixture. And also, I'm going to scrape the sides and the bottom. To apply the silicon, I'm simply going to kind of brush it and drip it on. It's the same kind of technique <clears throat> as coating with epoxy. And what the spinning should do is allow me to build up quite a thick coat. But also it should stretch the silicon and pop any bubbles. So I only really need to cover this worm section here in the middle and once I'm happy I've got enough on it's really quite overcoated I can leave that rotating for a couple of hours to set up. So it's a few hours later and I've taken my master off the rack. The silicon feels like it's it's kind of touch dry but it's not fully cured. I'm going to take this off the balsa. Hopefully. And then with a drop of super glue, I'm going to back on the tile. So for a mould box, I'm using Lego. And what I've done is I've put a lip around the edge of plasticine. And I'm going to position that. And press it into place. And then with the cocktail stick, I'm going to remove the excess very carefully. Then it's just a case of measuring out and mixing up another batch 
of silicon. Then I can just pour the mould and leave it to cure overnight. The silicon's completely cured and I've removed it from its mould box and Lego. Uh, and the first job I'm going to do to expose the worms is just cut the end off. What I'm looking for, I'm using a very sharp scalpel here. And what I'm looking to do is expose the funnels. Then on one side, I'm going to make a, a kind of shallow zigzagging cut. And this is going to give me a key. Then I can kind of stretch that open and make a parting line. The parting line wants to be straight down the worm. I'm going to stop just past the end of the worm, I'm not going to go all the way. Then it's a case of turning it over and repeating the same. Then when I'm happy with both sides, I can try and remove the worms. Oop. And as you can see, this is a pretty destructive process. If I open up the mould and bring the camera in a bit closer, I can see there that there's no bubbles at all on the surface of the mould. And that's really come from rotating the silicon. That's going to give me a really good casting. Before I inject the mould, I'm just going to prep it. First of all, I'm going to put a drop of layer lube. This is a an oil. Just and just work it into the, the mould on both sides. Then I can add my chamber and this is a um, quite a tight fit because I made the, the disc a little smaller. I've got two pieces of hardboard, one with a hole drilled in. These are to act as supports, I can place them over and to hold the supports in place I'm using elastic bands. I'm going to loop them a few times. I don't need excessive pressure on the mould. That's pretty much it. I've got a piece of dowel that I'm going to use as a plunger. This I've wrapped with just a bit of foil tape because it was a little small. I don't want an airtight seal when I push this down. There needs to be a slight gap to let the air out. So that's that's just about perfect. I can get on and heat some soft plastics up. So my plastic's heated, I'm going to half fill the chamber just put the plunger in, tilt my mould up and just gently press I'm going to 
give that a few seconds to cool. And then I can unplug just let out any excess. And leave it to cool for a couple of minutes. So that's had a, a minute or so to cool. I can open up my mould. I've given the mould a couple of goes and everything seems to be working great. The baits that are coming out are absolutely spot on. But I've also tested another mould I made which is slightly smaller and the worm the master is slightly smaller again this is 38 millimeters probably about an inch and a half and the worms it produces are kind of this size perfect for light rock fishing hopefully if the weather picks up I'll get out to test them If you've enjoyed watching this video and you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe or follow the link to my channel. Thanks for watching.